Hey everyone, Vinayak here. This is the Sony ZV-1, a camera targeted at loggers and released almost a year back with the release of the ZV-10. Is this still worth considering? Watch on to find out. The ZV-1 is reminiscent of the older point-and-shoot cameras I have used which have a fixed lens. By that, I mean that the lens cannot be changed. The Sony ZV-1 integrates a 20.1 megapixel 1-inch XMOR RS CMOS sensor and the processing muscle is provided by the Bionz X. It has 4K HDR recording, Wi-Fi control, SD card support and more. 315 autofocus points and real-time AF. This is something I'm hoping is good. Let's open the box and check out what we get. Oh, what's this on the top flap? It's a memory card. It's a 64 GB memory card. Make sure you don't miss it. Inside we have the warranty card, manuals and under this flap we have the camera and its accessories. The camera uses micro USB to charge which is okay but that's just another cable I need to pack when traveling. It uses NP-BX1 batteries which lasts around 60 minutes of continuous shooting. You can charge the battery using the micro USB port. So if you shoot in short bursts, it should last the day. And here's the camera. It's made of a composite material as opposed to the magnesium alloy that's on the RX100 and above. We have the Zeiss 24-70 equivalent lens which is integrated into the camera and can open the aperture all the way to f1.8 when completely zoomed out but shifts to f2.8 when you zoom in. The zoom range is around 2.7x. The grips are well placed with a rubberized feel, but the camera did feel a bit too small in my hands and at 294 grams is quite light. On top we have this hot shoe mount or as Sony calls it, a multi-interface shoe which can take not only flashes but even Sony mics with no other cable required. Devices connected here are also powered by the camera's battery, which is great. Sony provides this windscreen or dead cat as it's called to cut down on wind noise. When shooting outdoors, it's quite helpful and it can attach to the camera using the hot shoe. The camera has a directional 3 capsule mic which uses spatial filtering to capture clear audio in front of the camera with fewer distracting ambient sounds. I have to test out how the quality is though. We have an on-off button, a mode button, and the button with the red circle is to start stop video recording and this one is a nice one this is to toggle bokeh mode or shadow depth of field we have the shutter button with the integrated zoom rocker which needs to be used to zoom in and out we don't have any physical zoom ring on this lens a thumb rest is present above the buttons over here the camera is a trimmed down version of the sony rx100 with most of the innards so what's missing the first glaring difference is that this ZV-1 is missing an EVF or electronic viewfinder, but it does have this gorgeous screen, which I'm glad Sony designed to flip out to the side. It can be twisted and turned to the angle you like. Also, it rotates to the front and you have a selfie point of view, which is where its logging DNA lies. You could turn the screen around and bam, it's safe within. As the screen flips to the side, you're not blocked by any accessories you attach to the hot shoe. All the functions of the camera are controlled via the buttons here. The screen is a touch screen, but the menus are not. On the bottom, we have the tripod mount and the battery memory card the babe. Let's install the battery and start the camera up. The camera comes with a 64 GB memory card, which is fine, but I later upgraded to a 256 GB card so that the storage space doesn't become a hindrance to my recording time. Opening the screen activates the camera, which is nice as you are ready to shoot as soon as it's open. You can also manually turn the camera on or off using the button on top. The lens pops out when active and completely retracts into the body to keep itself safe when off. We have a shutter that protects the lens from the front and closes completely when the lens is retracted. Using the zoom rocker, it allows us to zoom in and out and you can see this lens physically moving as we make the changes. We have multiple modes which are accessible via the mode button. Higher end cameras have a dial, but this on this camera you need to use the interface. I am setting it to auto mode for now as I still need to get used to the camera's interface. Ports wise, we have the microphone in jack, which is a godsend. We can use any external mic with this, which can use a 3.5mm jack and that's really great. 
Under that, we have a micro USB and a micro HDMI port. All these ports are protected by a plastic flap and can be opened and closed separately as required. Memory cards supported are SDXC at QHS1 speeds. One massive problem is that the SD card and battery bay are not accessible when on a tripod. So I had to purchase this cage from SmallRig which when installed provides more mounting holes and also provides access to the battery and card slot even when on a tripod. Being small and compact and not weighing much, it's comfortable to carry around and a lot of places that ban DSLRs allow these in as they are considered non-professional compact cameras. If you travel a lot, this would be a handy camera to carry around. But I now have three different types of travel cameras and the battle would be which one should I pack when we can travel again. The dedicated video record and shutter buttons are easy to find even by feel and you can quickly access them. The function button provides access to settings on the screen to change important options such as uh, drive mode, autofocus, white balance, ND and more. And we also have a beauty mode available which I always keep off but for the beauty loggers out there it might be helpful. The 3 inch touchscreen is fully articulating and is bright enough and there is a sunny weather mode which increases the screen brightness. A viewfinder would have helped but Sony did have to cut costs somewhere. It's reasonably sharp at 921,000 dots. Also, I noticed that it seems to have problems with polarized sunglasses. We can shoot 4K up to 30 FPS and if you choose 1080p, we can shoot up to 120 FPS. It does have a HFR mode which can shoot at 240, 480 and 960 FPS. But higher the frame rate, the lower the resolution. We also have advanced profiles such as HLG, S-Log2 and S-Log3. Similar to the ones on the Sony higher-end models which provides more flexibility to fine-tune colors and tones. I shoot in the standard profile. Bright daylight, we have no problem shooting and the autofocus really works well. And the built-in ND or neutral density filters which allows bringing out more detail in the bright sunlight is really helpful. Low light and indoor shots can get grainy so try to bring in as much light as you can. We can burst capture at 24 fps in RAW or JPEG format. And holding down the shutter button, the buffer can hold around 75 RAW plus JPEG shots and 165 shots in JPEG only. It's rated for about 260 still shots and video recording time we get around 75 minutes in 1080p and 45 minutes in 4K on a full battery. But I always have it connected to a power bank or USB port via your computer so it can run longer. Unless it overheats. We do have a setting to allow it to ignore the heating and record longer and I have set it to that in the settings as I'm never sure how long I need to record. A steady shot option is also available which helps for still and also for video. We have two stabilization modes and both of them crop into the video and even more when set to active. This might annoy loggers who would want the stabilization but the crop makes it too close for comfort. 24mm is a bit tight for vlogging so I use this Manfrotto Pixie Mini to get more reach and it helps quite a bit and Sony has their own wireless shooting grip but that costs almost 10,000 rupees more so I didn't go for that. This is how close it gets when you're shooting at 24mm. Not that far but it's a little too tight I guess. I think it would be better if it was 15mm but it's not bad I guess. But if you use something like the Manfrotto Pixie Mini you can get quite a good reach. 315 face detection autofocus points or PDAF grab focus really fast and is really accurate. IAF for both humans and animals is available and works in both stills and video. ISO range is between 100 and 12,800 but being such a small sensor, low light shots are this camera's kryptonite. A recording light indicates when the camera is recording as it shines red but it reflects easily when shooting reflective products so I generally keep it turned off. Stills, be it human or objects close or far, it does a decent job. I did find that the macro mode only works when totally zoomed out and the bokeh mode or background defocus mode is just one button away so just tap and you get creamy bokeh with sharp subjects. This is actual bokeh and not like the software tricks that your smartphones do. And if you don't want this feature, you can always customize this button as this is a C1 or customizable button and you can set it to any other function that you want. The built-in microphone is quite capable and the sound is quite clear. And you can also attach an external microphone which connects to the 3.5mm jack to the side. And if the surroundings are not noisy, the audio sounds really clear. 
and for windy situations use the provided windscreen it does obscure the on off button but they are still accessible there is no audio monitor port so you cannot connect a pair of headphones to monitor audio levels the mode button allows toggling between multiple shooting modes like scene selection auto panorama and we have manual and memory recall modes too battery life is not that bad at around 60 minutes but if you are shooting at 4k it does drop quite fast as i mostly shoot in my studio it is connected to the pc and it lasts longer i do have a small charger which can charge three batteries at a time and connects via micro usb so you can charge multiple batteries using a power bank we can remotely control the camera via a pc and it's really helpful being able to monitor what's being recorded or you can change the settings and also start and stop recording this application is by sony and free to download via their website we also have the option to control the camera via the phone using sony's imaging edge app you can change settings start stop recording and also copy files over via wifi this is very important for influencers who want to post their pictures or videos fast online so why did i choose this camera this is to move my main camera the nikon z6 off the overhead rig as it's very expensive if this falls this will give me less of a heart attack but being much lighter the tripod could support it much better as compared to my 2 kilo nikon with lens a nifty feature specially made for product reviewers is the presenter mode you can bring anything in front of the camera and it automatically shifts focus to it most cameras target the face for focus but this mode allows keeping the product in focus so even if i'm visible the product is prioritized more in this mode the zv1 is a great camera for casual shooters and also influencers who don't want a very expensive camera but still get great quality the auto focus is what i would really pick this camera for and it is just great there are some limitations such as a small battery as the body is quite small no viewfinder the lens is fixed so you cannot swap them like it's a bigger brother and but that is something i am actually happy about as it's protected within the camera body the camera is not cheap but still costs half as much compared to their bigger cousins and do note the camera bodies themselves are much more expensive than the zv1 not bringing the lenses into consideration i would totally recommend the sony zv1 for first time vloggers and influencers as it's affordable and the 1 inch sensor will give you better images than your average smartphone camera so that was the video make sure to like subscribe and also hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added thank you for watching and see you all next time